In today's video, I'm going to be showing you on how you can easily add a keycard door into your Roblox game. So, in today's video, we're going to be using DW Prox by Whitehall, which is a cool door access management system, and it basically makes these little keycard doors super easy to do inside of our Roblox games. So, before we make this, I'm actually going to show you how this door works. So, here we have a door hold, and we have a keycard reader and an exit button, okay? So what I'm going to first demonstrate is the keycard reader. I have my keycard here, which of course I can customize, and I'm going to scan it. You can see it's going to beep, it's going to read it, and then I can walk through, and then hopefully after 5 seconds these doors should shut. Yeah, perfect. And then also here you can see that we have a pressed exit button, which makes a clicking sound, it has a nice cool animation, and then it goes inside and the door once again will be open. And the final thing which we'll be doing is using this cool little door hold system so that when we scan the keycard, the door will actually hold open and won't close until we trigger this door hold again. Which I personally think is a super cool thing if you want to have a realistic door system. So I'm now going to scan my keycard on the door hold again. Oop, and you're going to see that it closes and it's going to remain locked and head back to its original state. So now I'm going to show you on how you can install this on your Roblox game and how we can use all the customizable things inside of DW Prox. Okay, so here we are with the DW Prox access control model and as you can see, you can click on the download button. Let me just pretend I don't own it. So as you can see, I don't own this model and I'm going to click on get model and it's going to put it inside of my inventory. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head over to Roblox Studio. We're going to open up our toolbox then we're going to head over to this symbol, which is inventory, and then as you're going to see, DW Prox will be right there, and we can click on it. That link for the DW Prox model will be in the description down below. And as you can see, here are all of our doors. Now, it does come with some, I don't even know what to call this, some bollards, which can be used in roads, but... They work with the scanner, which is going to be explained later on, but personally, I'm not going to show you on how you can use this today. So what I'm going to do is click on the DW Prox V3 model, and then I'm going to press Control U. You can also right click and click on Ungroup. And then once I have ungrouped it, you can see that everything has been separated. So here you have the API docs, and DW Prox can be pretty simple. However, if you're a developer, you can customize it more. But today, once again, we're just going to be going over the basics. So I'm going to delete the API docs, and I'm also going to be deleting the bullards. Now, as you can see here, we have all of our proximity readers, which are essentially keycard readers. We have our exit devices, and we have our control devices, okay? So the proximity readers read keycards and validate them. The exit devices let you exit and the control devices can control the state of the door. And by default, DW Prox or Whitehall provides us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 different types of doors. So for today's tutorial, I'm just going to be using this door, which is the office door double. I'm going to delete all the others. And I'm also going to delete these misc parts. And as you can see, we're left with all of our different devices here. So by default, when you open up this door, we're going to have a couple of things inside. We're going to have the doors, which are here. We're going to have the DW Prox folder, which is here. And then we're going to have the settings file, which is right here. So if we open up the settings file, ooh, I wouldn't open that. That can actually make your computer crash. But as you can see, inside of the settings file here, we have all the different type of customization. So we have the door name, we have the handle mode. I would recommend actually keeping this all the same. Maybe you want to change the door name, but not really if you use the proximity prompt. So just for now, I'm just going to call it Office Door 1. However, you don't have to necessarily do that. And then we're going to have to look inside of DW Prox, and you can see we have our buttons, so here we have our exit button, and then we have our readers, which is here, and then we have our settings, which has a lot of fun little information. It has authorized people, I think these are like people affiliated with um, Whitehall or the, uh, the production of DW Prox. I'm just going to remove that for now, and then authorized groups I would also remove, because I just don't know these groups, and then that is looking all good. Good. So you can add a um, webhook, but once again, we're just going to be going over all the basics. So ignore all of this, and you can really ignore all of this technically. Um, you can change the open time, so you can keep it open for one or for five. That's really up to you. Oh, it's not Whitehall, it's Whitehill. That's my bad, everybody. <laughs> I've been saying it wrong the entire time. 
Um, and then that should be all the basics inside. And also inside of your reader, you also have your reader settings. But we'll be going over that shortly. So if you don't like this reader, we actually have quite a couple of readers we can use. So we have bigger ones, we have smaller ones. I don't even know what this is. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, but we have all these different readers. And I think I'm going to use this reader. Because also we get these two different types of um, cards. They both do the exact same thing. They're literally a different design. But personally, I do like this design more. However, you can customize these cards by changing up the handle. And maybe removing pictures and changing all of this. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep that like that. I think that looks really nice. Um, so here I have the reader. I want to take this one. So I'm going to drag it out of this folder. And then I'm going to come over here to my door. I'm just going to close this. And as you can see, here's my double door. I'm going to open up the DW Prox model, go to readers, and as you can see, here's my old reader, it's highlighted in blue, and I'm literally just gonna press the delete button and then it's gonna be gone. But actually, I would actually press Control Z, head to position and copy it first, and then delete the reader. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the um, cone reader, which is the one I wanted, which is this one. I'm going to set the position to the position I just copied, that's looking great. I can also drag that a bit if I want. There we go. I like that more. And then we're going to drag this reader into DW Prox buttons and then not into buttons, but actually readers. Okay. Because this is a reader and not a button. Okay. Then I'm also just going to plop this door down here. And also with my cone access card, I'm just going to chuck this into starter pack now. So now if we go ahead and try this out, it should read everything and should work correctly. So you can see, I'm going to go into the game here. Okay, I have my keycard on me. I'm going to head over to the door. And then when I scan my keycard, you're going to see. Okay, and that is not good. Okay, it is not reading. Have I made a mistake? Ah, you need to turn on HTTP requests, okay? So, for example, this game isn't published. But let's say you do publish game. So publish Roblox as. And then we're going to call this DW Prox Doors. We're going to create it, and then we're going to change the game settings. Oh, wait for it to load. Okay, um, I should not have accidentally turned on Team Create. There we go, it's loading, still loading. Come on, almost there. And then we're going to click on Game Settings, and then we're going to go to Security, and then we're going to allow HTTP requests. Then let's go ahead and play, and hopefully this time it should work. Okay, so I got my keycard here, and I'm going to scan it. Oh, and you're going to notice it is not working. So we need to find out why it's not working. So maybe the two different key cards do not have the same role. So let's check this. We're going to open it up. We're going to just quickly take out the key card. And let's see if these two cards are different. I may have also accidentally deleted something or maybe I can't use that reader. So let's just remove my old one. And I'll also give me the other DW process card, which is the um, Whitehall one. And then I'm going to delete that. And now let's try to see if these two cards actually do play a different role. Or if these two cards don't read, maybe it is the reader. So when using systems like this, it's really important that we actually look and detect bugs. And um, the really important step is actually being able to fix these bugs. So if I scan my card again, ah, there we go. So I must have accidentally deleted the wrong thing inside of my access card that caused this bug. So let's try again with my uh, white hill card. I keep saying white hall. If I scan it, ah, and it works again. And if I go on through, you're going to see that my button, oh, let's just wait for it to close, we're going to click on press to exit, and the press to exit button works fantastically. Let's say you also wanted to customize the level of access, so almost like a level access system. So let's just use my cone card here, and you can see inside of cone access card, it has an access level, and also a lift destination so cone is actually an elevator company so i presume you can also put this on your roblox elevators maybe that's a tutorial for another time and as you can see in my access card in my access card it has a access level and then it has a value of zero so if we look inside our door head to dw prox then to readers and then to the card reader and the reader settings you can see that cards with one two three four five and zero are allowed in so let's say we only allow cards with five in and you're going to see that our card has a value of 5 in the access level. So if I go ahead and play it now, we're not actually going to be allowed in because only access level 5s are allowed in. And this card is a level 0. So I'm going to scan. 
and as you can see we're denied it goes red uh, on some readers it may not exactly do that but however if I now set the access level to become 5 head into play you're going to see that it's actually gonna let us inside so I have my access card here and I'm gonna scan it and look at that it works so now what we're gonna do is we're going to add a door control system which is one of these and then a press exit button which we'll customize so instead of having the green one we're gonna have this little button one and we're also going to change the time that the doors stay open so if you remember correctly to change the time that the door stays open we head over to official we head over to our doors to settings and I'm just going to head over into settings of DW Prox, and you're gonna see there's an open time and I'm gonna keep this on 1.5 so that is quite a short time but I think you should be able to make that so if I now test that out remember testing is really important so I'm gonna grab my card I'm going to scan it okay we let well yep okay we're let in and I walk in and there we go okay the time is a bit tight but I think it's suitable see I'm in I walk in might be good for something like a high security building okay so now that I've got that um, I am now going to customize the button so uh, right now I have this green button which I don't like and is literally the exact same thing we do for the reader so we're going to head to the press to exit button position we're going to delete this we're going to grab this button okay make sure you grab the proper model we're going to replace the position and ah, if the uh, and ah, if the rotation is not on you can rotate it manually or I prefer to press control R and that puts it in the correct orientation and then we're going to head over to our door model, then to DW Prox, and then to buttons. And here we go. The, we have, and here we go. We have the press exit button working. And I'm also going to add, and I'm also going to add that door hold button. So I'm going to grab this switch, and I'm going to chuck that into buttons. And then I'm just going to delete the um, DW Prox uh, reader model here. And then I'm going to drag my draw. And then I'm going to drag. And then I'm going to drag my hold key switch to a suitable position or suitable height, which is around here, I'd say is a good height. And then I'm going to click on play, and it's now time to test out our doors. So we have our key card here. Okay, we're going to scan it. Boop. And the door's open. Oh, got to remember, it quickly closes. Then if I click on press to exit, it lights up, and it's going to quickly close. And then now, let's say you want to keep the door open. Let's say you're bringing in some heavy materials and you need the door to stay open. We're going to scan our access card against the door hold. It's going to change from normal to hold. And now the doors will stay open until someone once again closes them. Okay, so I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions or you want a video suggestion, head over to my Discord, which will be linked down below. That's all from me. Thank you for tuning in and bye-bye.